That means Hashem, we're going to talk today about purity. I talked today about purity, and we're also next week, Mitzvah Hashem, going to begin the Yam Darkech on Shoivim. On Shoivim. So we're going to spend a few more days here on the Vekas, and everything is the Vekas. But really today I just wanted to be a special announcement, a special message. Something that I heard from Tzvi Meyer that I think is so important. <coughs> that really has the ability to change the course of our life forever. And it's something that, especially now in the world, we need this. We need these words. We need words from the tzaddik. And therefore, I want to just make sure that we say it over to all of us now, to all of us here. Because Hanukkah doesn't really end. You know, we didn't make Havdalah. Hanukkah is going to continue for us. And there's a very big takeaway that I want to make sure that we really take away with us. So I just had a special message to say. So we know that there were two miracles in Hanukkah. What were the two main miracles of Hanukkah? The first miracle was probably the bigger one, almost certainly the bigger one, was the battle, was the war, that you had a small group of Kohanim, a small group of Yidalas, and they went out and they fought hundreds of thousands of armed soldiers, the Greek Syrian Empire, which in those days they had the equivalent of tanks, elephants, well trained, and they took to battle against a few yeshiva guys who were sitting in the base of Medrash, learning Yvamis, Bab Metziah. And we won. And we defeated that empire, the impure into the hands of the pure, the many to the hands of the few, the zaydim, the scoffers, the ones who believed in something so shallow and so dark. They were overcome by the oiske soira secha, by those that learned Torah. And that battle was not only a miracle, miraculously, that we won, but it was a win that our philosophy, our belief system won out over the Hellenistic beliefs, which is maybe more potent than ever in the world right now. Those beliefs that there's no God, a way of looking at the world that all you have is the external, all you have is the outside, a world that says that tar mitzvahs has no intrinsic meaning and essentially believes in the worship of the body which is basically what they're trying to tell you to do when you watch all marketing to worship your instincts and your desires and our belief is is that there's an eternal world there's a world that goes on forever and there's a very special place within us that we don't want to contaminate So that was an amazing miracle, because that miracle goes on until this very day. That the ability of the pure can overcome the impure. And what was the second miracle of Hanukkah? The The oil. The the lamp, yes, lighting the menorah. Now, by the way, in in terms of miracles in the Beis HaMikdash, would that be called a big one? Let's put it in other words. In the Beis HaMikdash, there were miracles all the time. So it's true, this was another miracle. They came in and they found one jar of oil that was enough for one day and the jar of oil burned for eight days. It's an open miracle. But in the realm of miracles, you know, there was many miracles happening in the temple. There was miracles that, even though there was a lot of wind and the pillar of fire was outside, it never moved. That's pretty awesome. Could you imagine the pillar of fire just going right up? And just watching, and people like getting blown in the basement and just watching this fire. Totally straight. Amongst many others. So yes, that you should have a place that a jar of oil that would burn for one day is burned for eight days. And what do we celebrate on Hanukkah? Do we celebrate the war? Did any of you guys get together on the nights of Hanukkah and one side was the Maccabees and the other side dressed up as the Greeks 
with your togas and your swords and elephants, and you guys fought, and you like, you know, overcame each other, and you switched sides? Or did you all just light Hanukkiahs? So why is that the main mitzvah? Why is that the main miracle? The main miracle should be the war. And furthermore, in the al what do we focus on in the al That great prayer that we say every day of Hanukkah so many times. What do we focus on? Do we focus on the lighting of the candles? Or do we focus on the war? We focus on the war. The lighting of the candles is a small little part right at the end. The entire of the al is that the Yavanim came, Lashkichem Torah Secha, they made us forget God's Torah, which was itself part of their whole belief system. We don't mind if you learn Torah. Just don't tell me that it's connected to God. You know what Torah is? I can't stand when people do this. They say, you know, I'm, so I got to go to school. I got to go to class. This is not school. This is not class here. This is not academia land. This is the yeshiva. This is a place that we sit. Yeshiva also means return to God. We come home. We're not just here to st- stick and stop in information into our heads. We're here to return to God. That's what it's really all about here. So they said, no, no, no yeshivas. You know where you can learn Torah? In university. You get a PhD in Talmud. Just don't tell me that it's connected to God. And we speak about how their philosophy is lost. And we overcame them. And then right at the end it says that we came in Lachatz Rizkot Shecha and we found the oil and that was it. So if the main part is about the war, why do we end? We have a principle which is the chasima, the end. I.e. what you end with should be in theme with what the main theme was. So if the main theme is the war, then why do we end with the oil? And if the war is not the concept, then why do we have a chasima? Why do we end with the oil? I mean, the beginning of the al doesn't seem to fit in with the end. Or at least start with the war, go to the oil, and then end with the war. The whole of the al is a question. So let me tell you what Ibn Simar said. And I don't think we could live another day without this. We mamish need this. Humanity is on the brink of very, very challenging and dark times, and we need to switch that immediately. And anyone here is really listening is is the sign that they want to be soldiers in this. And by soldiers I mean with consciousness. We fight with ideas. We fight back with light. So Tzimara says, why were they able to have all the miracles of the war? Why were we able to overcome the Greeks and their philosophies? Because we had something called pure olive oil. What does that pure olive oil represent? The pure olive oil means that there's a place inside of us, there's a jar that has the chosma yishal koyen godl, there's a jar that has the seal of the high priest on it, that that jar of oil was totally sealed off from anything impure. There was something protecting that jar. That every one of us inside of us has this place called our container of olive oil, which means our mind and our neshama, our soul. The word shemen, right? Shmone. Shemen is from the word shmone. Shmone is shemen. Shmone is the same letters as neshama, your soul. That's why the oil, no matter what you try to do with it, it's, it stays above. It rises up. It doesn't mix. It's pure. But the Greeks were trying to defile our oils. They were trying to defile the pureness within us. There's a pureness inside of every single one of us, the Shemen Zai Zach, that pure olive oil that needs to remain pure. And there's a lot of influences right now in the world that are trying to make it impure. But when we came into the holy, and we came into the Beis HaMikdash, to Chatz Reis Kodshech Hashem, we found that olive oil, we found something so pure. We knew that there was a place that even though the Greeks tried to make it impure, There's a place that they can never touch, and we're holding on to that place. We're holding on to that inner purity that we have. And says Tzimayr, it's because of the fact that we guarded our inner oil, that's how we merited the miracle of the war. We could never have won such a war if we made ourselves impure. 
by the things we looked at, by the things we listened to, by the things that we <coughs> ate, things we spoke about. Shoftim v'shoftim titen b'chol sharecha. The Shla Kodesh says you should make shoftim, make judges, and make police officers in all of your gates. Says the Shla Kodesh. It's time with the gates of your face. You have seven gates on your face. You have two eyes. Those are two gates. You have two ears. Two more gates. Two nostrils. What are you schmecking? And a mouth. It's another gate. Seven gates. Those are the seven branches of the candelabra. Those gates, that's the oil, that's the pure oil. You have to keep this all pure. And you're going to have to put up guards in those places to keep those things pure because gates let things in, you know. You have to make sure that you decide what comes in. Just like you put a lock on your door because you don't want any crazy, you know, person just coming into the house. And if someone says, you, you come on, man, you're racist. Why don't you, why don't you leave your door open, man? What, you don't want me to come in? No, you're a wild human being, it sounds like. Uh, no, I think there's a reason why there's locks on doors. Because there's some crazy people out there. And we understand that we don't just open our eyes and everything is okay. There has to be a place inside of us called Shemen Zai Zach, called pure olive oil. And because the oil was pure, with the chaysma of the Kohen Gadol, that's how we get all the miracles. You want miracles? We all need miracles in this world. We need Hashem to show us that we could overcome the powers of Hellenism and that the few could overcome the many. That's by staying pure. You know, the Sanza Rebbe, when he was young, he wanted to change the whole world. And we all want to change the whole world. And after a few years went by, he said, I'm not sure if I could change the whole world. So I decided I was going to at least change my entire country. And then he realized after a few years he wasn't able to do that. So he says, well, I'm not going to change the whole country, but I'm going to change my entire city. And then after a few years he realized he couldn't change over his entire city. So he said, at least I'm going to change my entire family, my whole family. I'm to, we're going to. And he realized even that he couldn't do. And then he said, but what I will do is I'm going to change myself. And if I change myself, I'll be able to change the whole world. When you guard yourself, you're able to protect and guard the entire world. Everything goes along with it. You know, there was a famous story from the Hoistin Rebbe. A big, big tzaddik. Famous story from the Hoistin Rebbe. So there was a time when something was happening that was not good. And you know, the tzaddikim come and they go to places to fix things. That's a big thing that tzaddikim do. They go to fix things. When they see that that pure olive oil is at risk of being contaminated. They go to fix. So he came into one of the towns, and there were many there who greeted him with covered malachim, with like the honor of kings, bestowed to kings. And at one point, one of the paritzes, a paritz means one of the, uh, the let's say, wealthy landowners of the, of, the, of the time, came over and he saw, why is this what they called the wunderabina? Now that was a term that was used by the nations that when there were rabbis who could do great miracles, they would call them a wunderabina. The one who could do these miraculous things. Because in every generation there's been wunderabinas who could do miraculous things. You know, by the way, the last time that I was in Ukraine to, uh, to the Baal Shem Tevs, to Mezhbich. So you go to his mikveh which is not from this world, I'll tell you that much. It is, it is icy. <laughs> it's so cold. It makes the Ari Zal's make feel like a, like a spa. <laughs> Those are the best, man. Yeah, the icy. I, I thought I was going to die. <laughs> I thought maybe it, it, it took all the Gehenim Shel Shelig, Loa Lenu. It just, you were Yotze Zayn. And when you speak to the locals there, there's, there's like this folklore. And if anyone has the opportunity to go, please, I encourage everybody. That everybody knows that, that this spring there is not, it's not normal. They brought in water experts and geologists, people who know how to study. There's no reason that this spring should exist. 
that there's no underwater water tables. And the locals say, yeah, but this is the Vundar Abina's bath. <coughs> and Ada Yom there's still like local Ukrainians with like chickens running around outside and they live in like, like shacks. And they all say, yeah, something happened and this just came, it just somehow, this, this spring came out of something. A Vundar Abina. Rabbis who can make miraculous things. You need water, sir, there's going to be water here. Like the Orachim HaKadosh famously says, that everybody knows that, that we celebrate great miracles from the Torah. Shvi Shel Pesach, when God split the sea, is a Yom Tev. We celebrate God split the sea, and all the waters of the world split at the same time. Could you imagine somebody in Timbuktu, you know, drinking a cup of Coke, and all of a sudden, next thing he knows, the Coke is splitting, and the guy's like, whoa! All the waters of the world. But when you open the Gemara, the Gemara is filled with miracles, left, right, and center. Rabbis are resurrecting other people. Like on every other page. And people are making like carob trees walk around and water's changing, you know, directions. So why don't we make festival days for all the miracles that it says inside the Torah? Says the Orach HaMakodesh. Because before the Torah was given to Kalal Yisrael to do a miracle, it was a wondrous thing. After the Torah was given to Klal Yisrael, because the Torah lets you control all of nature, it's not a wonder that you could do miracles anymore. That's already normal, ha that's already normal stuff now. Oh yeah, Rabbi Shimon could like, you know, bring people back to life. Oh, that's, yeah, that's normal. That, that, that Rabbi Zaira, could come to, you know, and Rabbah, they could have a, a suda together for Purim, and then one, you know, what happens, happens, and then he just resurrects him, and he says, you want to come to me Purim again? So, yeah, that's no, no problem. No problem. Miracles is something that are part of the tzaddikim, of the oragonas. So back to us. So this parrot said, you know, tell me about this wonder, Rabino. You know, why are they giving you such honor? So he said, you know, I'll tell you. You know, there are certain rabbis that are rabbis of small cities. Those are very, very special rabbis. Then there's other rabbis that are rabbis of big cities. You know, then there's even rabbis that are rabbis over an entire region. And you know, then there's even rabbis that are rabbis over an entire country. But there's a rabbi even greater than that. That's a rav, that's someone who's a master over himself. He's much bigger. You know, it's pretty easy to be a rabbi over an entire country. But to be a master over yourself, that you keep the internal oils pure, and you say that I don't let everything just come into me. Well, that's already not so easy. That's what it means to be a vandarabina. Be a vandarabina. Keeping things pure. You know, there was a great tzaddik named uh, Avnei Nezer. He was the father of Shemi Shmuel. He wrote a book, you guys should really read it, it's very good. As you guys continue to grow, you'll hear about it. It's on Hilcha Shabbos, it's called Igle Tal, famous. I'm the first, it's one of the most famous books on Hilcha Shabbos, wondrous. It's on the first 12 malachas. He wrote a letter, a scary thing, he said, do you know why I was only able to write on the first 12 malachas? Because two times in my life, I saw somebody breaking Shabbat. And because of that, it went into me, it made such a deep impression that I didn't, my oils weren't pure, that I could only write these first 12. And he says, if I would have seen a Hilul Shabbat one more time, I would not even have been Igle Town. 12 each time. 12 plus, you might say, up to 39 that there would not even be an Igle Tao. These are very high levels. But for us, what does it mean to keep ourselves very, very pure? So I want to give you one Eitzah uh, from the Maggid from Mezbich. So the Maggid said the following. There was somebody that came to the Maggid, because this is about being pure. And this is the whole preparation. If you want miracles, if you want these, you want to bring Hanukkah with you, you want to defeat forces of Hellenism in the world. Because you know what Hellenism is offering you for eternal life? Nothing. It's offering you nothing. Nothing. 
But it looks so good, Rabbi. It looks so good. Look at these buildings. Look at this position. Yeah. Look at my status. For what? For what? Where are you going to be for eternal life? What status? We're into good business decisions. I think really what rabbis are dedicated to is being the best businessmen possible. You know what that means? Choosing wisely now that you make long-term investments for eternity. I don't think there's any better business decision than that. That's called, you know, buy, buy low down over here in this world, not so hard, and then sell high, and then for all eternity. But a person says, no, I'm going to buy high over here, yeah. I'm going to buy high, it's going to be good, yeah, yeah. Let's just do all sorts of things. And then the problem is when you get there, there's nothing to sell. Nobody's buying. There's nothing. You don't have anything. So how do we keep that oil pure? Because when that oil is pure, we, it's going to burn for all eternity. It says that the soul, Ner Hashem Nishmas Adam, that our soul is like a flame. And just think about that for a moment. When you have pure oil, you ever notice how nice the flame is? It burns. It's gorgeous. And the light that it emits. But have you seen oil that's like got like, like nasty stuff in it? The flame's like... It's not good. You want pure oil. Pure, pure oil. So there's a very hush of a person that came to the maggot. So I'm giving you guys the advice now. Okay, this is the takeaway. And he said, you know, Rabbi, I just, I get these thoughts in my head. Like the Yate Sahara comes to me and he just comes and he's like, yo, come on, just watch another episode of Netflix. You deserve it. And I don't know how to stop it. I don't know how to stop it. What do I do? I don't want, I don't want to listen to the Yate Sahara. I don't want to listen. I want to keep my oils pure. So the Magid, with his great Ruch HaKodesh, he said, I want you to go to a certain Kretschmere. I want you to go to a certain, a certain, like, in those days, an old school, like Motel 6. Like a place far out there. An inn. And it was very, very late at night. And he got there. It was cold. The cold Ukrainian winter. And he got to the inn very, very late. And he was freezing. He knocked on the door. It was a Chosh of a Heilige Yid a holy Yid who ran the Kretschmer. And the Yid came and said, yes. And he said, I was sent by the Maggid. Let me in, it's freezing out here. And this Yid who ran the Kretschmer knew what was going on. He knew Baruch HaKadosh. You could see from the Maisa that even Pasha the Yid that owned Kretschmer's had Ruch HaKadosh. He knew from the Maisa that this Yid was being sent by the Maggid for a certain reason. And he answered him like this. Better in Yiddish. Ich bin the Balabayas, und the Balabayas lets nishtarayim. Ich bin the Balabayas, and the Balabayas lets nishtarayim. I'm the Balabayas, you know, I run this place. I don't have to let you in. The guy's like, oh, now I know why the maggot sent me. He sent me because what does it mean? I own this place, and I let in whom I want. He was telling him, you're the master over your mind. The next time the Yetzirah comes knocking on your door, you say, I'm sorry, I'm, I, I'm the owner here. I don't have to open my door for you. You're coming in and offering me to do all sorts of things that I don't want to do, that are beneath my dignity. This is for men, women, for the women especially. If someone comes and tells you to do something that's not, that's below your dignity, do not do it. Don't do things just for attention. You're worthy. You're better than that. You're, who you are is beautiful on the inside. Just say no. Say, I run this. I'm the master here. I want to keep my inner olive oil pure. I don't want to let in. I decide so important in our generation and that's going to bring miracles that's going to bring the strength to overcome the forces of all that's dark in the world Yavin means darkness everything dark 
So this is a big chizik for us. This is a big strengthening for us that we decide definitively, I want to be pure. I want to keep that inner oil very pure. I want to be someone who is pristine, just like the Chashmanai. To hire him. And then it doesn't matter how many forces are trying to overcome you when you decide, I'm the Balabais. I'm the master of this house, and I decide who comes in. Then no matter what, no matter how hard they're knocking, you just say, I'm the master of this home. I decide who comes in with strength and with confidence. And Bizrat Hashem, this is one of the big, big takeaways now, right, right now, to look at good things, to look at pure things. And therefore, I'm asking all of you, I want all of you to make a bit of an accounting. What are the things in my life right now that maybe I want to be careful of? That maybe, yeah, they're not quite according to my dignity. That I need to start creating certain lines because I want to keep those inner oils pure. I want to keep that inner self pure. I want to be pure. I want to be good. So now is the time I want everyone to think and make a list for yourselves. What are the things that is already going over that line? And it's each person according to their level. And Bezrat Hashem, if we do that, it's going to be a tremendous nachas ruach to Kodesh Baruch Hu. You're going to see miracles happening in your life because you're making a move to keep the Shem and Zai Zach, the inner olive oil, so pure and good. And with that, we'll light up the menorah once again in the Beis HaMikdash with Mitzchia Tzidkin. Amen. 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 Have a wonderful week, Chavra. Yeah.